I'd like to welcome you to the BSE America location here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Pete Hauser. We're here with a great partner, Braxton Bragg. We went ahead and we are doing a complete list as far as what materials you need to properly set your tools. We we're also gonna go ahead and find exactly how you take those measurements, how you upload those into the software on both the CAM software and the CNC itself. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start making a footprint. With that footprint, it's gonna show us how we have to adjust those tools up or down. And we're also gonna go ahead and show you how to put those polishers in properly without overpressure. Once we get those footprints created, we're gonna go ahead and show you exactly those quality edges, so how you can maintain those edges as well. Then we're gonna take some time and actually do an evaluation of a time study, how you can do a time study so you can figure out exactly how much that machine can produce for you. All right, well I'd like to start off here by going over the materials that we need to go ahead and mount tools properly so we can get uh, things going in a timely manner. So to begin with, we want to make sure that we have the right lubrication. So starting with a marine grease that we're going to use to mount the tools, uh, we want to go ahead and make sure that we have a poly lubricant. Uh, silicone will work for this. Typically I like to find something that is a water repellent or a dust repellent that can go inside that we're going to coat those uh, tools or the ISO cones lightly when we place them back in the machine. We need some way that we're going to be mounting these tools. So this is actually a Blick ISO cone mount. Typically you'll have those supplied with your CNC as well. We want to make sure that we have an adjustable wrench, a torque wrench, and sometimes we'll go ahead and if we have a strap wrench or a oil uh, filter um, wrench will be very, very helpful. We also want to go ahead and make sure you have the proper dressing stones. So if we come into any issues or if we've got older tools, how we can maintain those as well. Uh, also, I like to go ahead and utilize a larger dressing brick that's going to be used to maintain your core bits while within the CNC. So some machines we can actually mount this inside and do a preventative maintenance on the fly as the machine runs. We also go ahead and take a rag, make sure that you have a mechanics mirror so we can go ahead and check out those profiles for measuring purposes of the stone material. So we're going to have a tape measure. We also are going to want our caliper so we can go ahead and measure out our tools as well as a depth gauge so we can actually check to see what those removals are per step per tool as we're going on the fly. Make sure you got a pen and paper so we can be taking notes as we go on. All right, well first to explain some of the tools that we're looking at right now, so more on your consumable side of things. Uh, we've got our half gas uh, ISO cones that are going to be utilized on an Intermac machine. These are DMU uh, ISO cone. Then we're going to go ahead and we have a drill bit. This is a 35 millimeter or inch and three eighths core bit that's going to be used for your faucets and sinks if you haven't already cut those out prior. Uh, we've got a black storm finger bit and we also have a blind hole drill bit. Uh, these can be utilized in multiple different sizes. Uh, this one here is a 12 millimeter as well. So we're going to get straight to mounting. First, we want to go ahead and grab that cone, set that into your mount, and we're going to start off with our core bit, and we'll make sure that we're taking some marine grade grease. Go ahead and apply that all the way around on the threads, and we want to go ahead and put it on the taper section as well. This here is going to help to repel all of that water, so that way the next time you go to remove this tool, it's going to come off with ease. And just with an adjustable wrench is fine and we're just going to go ahead and hand tight that. You no need to over tight it. Go ahead and make sure that when you're tightening these up, do not use a pair of pliers. Finger bit once again, we're going to go ahead and apply that marine grade grease all the way around, including that taper. Inspecting all these tools as you go through, making sure that the water slots are all the way through. This one here has a center water slot. You can go ahead and look through the base of it to make sure that you have light going all the way through. So if you see light going all the way through, we're good. All right. These are on our consumable sides and how we're going to go ahead and mount these tools up. So as you mount it back up, you can check to make sure on your core bit, do you have light coming through all the way through? If you have a water outlet, making sure that those water outlets are drilled all the way through as well. So same thing with the finger bits, making sure that all of our water slots or our drill holes are done all the way through so that way the water can get through there as well. We'll do another test on the machine to make sure you verify this tool 
as well as everything else. So as we get everything mounted up, also make sure that your retention knobs are clearly fastened prior to getting them. If they're not, you'll have to tighten those up as well. If we go ahead inside each cone, typically it will give you a set of instructions as far as how that tool gets mounted up and exactly what those torque settings are. So right now we've got an M8 screw, which is saying it's supposed to be 25.5 is the uh, torque setting, and that is Newton meters. So we're gonna go ahead and start ourselves with a power edge, which is a Super Z. Once again, once we bring these tools in, we wanna do a quick inspection. First off, make sure there's no obvious uh, defects. Also checking to make sure that all the water holes are drilled all the way through. So if you don't have a water hole that's drilled all the way through, we wanna go ahead and flag that. Sometimes you'll have a manufacturer, if they spray coat or something else, it may not appear to be all the way through and all's what it is is a little bit of paint that's going ahead and gluing up in that hole. So all what you can do is you could go ahead and get a hand drill, you could drill that out uh, by hand or typically you can just go ahead and punch it out, real simple. So we're gonna go ahead, utilize our marine grease again and we're gonna go ahead and apply that inside this tool where it's gonna come into contact. So as you can think of when we're mounting these tools up, we wanna make sure that that is a machine fit. It is extremely tight and at times it may feel like it may not mount properly. So biggest thing is put it on nice and slow. You may have to go ahead and twist that tool to get it to go ahead and mount on properly. Adjusting it back and forth, slide it all the way down. For myself, it's extremely important, depending on the tools that you're using, to try and mount that directly to the cone. I'm a big fan, or not a big fan, of putting spacers in because what we want to do is that is both machine grade on both sides. So if we machine it properly, we're going to go ahead and we're going to mount that on. It's going to be its tightest fit. And when we're doing the dimensions of the machine, we don't have to worry about calculating any spacers out of it. This particular tool, if we go ahead and we try and put just the cap on and we push that down, we're not gonna have enough clearance. So we wanna make sure we have plenty of clearance on side of there so we're not gonna have any issues when we get that mounted up properly. So we're gonna go ahead and put one spacer and we'll set that right here. We're gonna go ahead and hand tight and I'm gonna go straight to my torque wrench and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. What I'm gonna do is tighten all the way to the point where I hear that click, I know that I'm done. Okay, if you hear that again, that click means that we're tight all the way. This tool is ready to go. So, on this next one. So, this particular series is the flex version. So, once again, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lubricate this up. Okay, inside here, if we look, I'm only placing it on this top ring and this other area, this other ring here. There's no sense in putting extra lubrication inside of here with all the water holes. It's not gonna come in contact with the cone itself. Once again, go ahead and put that on. Get that right till it clicks. We're good enough. Okay, bring that till it clicks. All right, if you ever get one that's too tight, which will happen, that's why this will come in handy. So we've got our strap here. We can go ahead and grab it rather than damaging that tool. And that slides right down. And here we go. We've got all of our tools ready to go. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the next phase of it. We're gonna take some measurements, write that down. We're gonna go ahead and figure out how you upload that information into the CNC and also how we're gonna take that information and upload that into your CAD CAM software. For this instance, we're gonna go ahead and utilize the Intermac machine as well as iCAM, the software.